The first contraceptive pill received FDA approval in 1960. It contained only synthetic estrogen, and it worked by making a woman's body think she's already pregnant. That is, a woman naturally produces higher levels of estrogen when she's pregnant, and this prevents ovulation, or the release of an egg. However, the high levels of synthetic estrogen in the pill from the 1960s and 70s caused dangerous side effects. After many women began to suffer blood clots, heart attacks, and strokes, the pill manufacturers lowered the levels of estrogen from an initial 150 micrograms per pill to today's dosage of 30 to 20 micrograms. While this reduced the rates of side effects, it increased the rates of unintended breakthrough ovulations. In response, pill manufacturers added synthetic progesterone to the synthetic estrogen. The progesterone has two effects. First, it thickens a woman's cervical mucus to impede the movement of sperm en route to the egg. Second, the progesterone dries up blood vessels along the uterine wall. So if a sperm still reaches the egg and fertilizes it, the embryo has nowhere to implant, but is lost in a woman's menses. For this reason, the contraceptive pill also works as an abortifacient. This is a fact that pill manufacturers don't advertise or promote. Therefore, the goal of this video is to inform people of the truth and to remind them of what actually happens at fertilization or conception. Here, the 23 chromosomes from the man's sperm and the 23 chromosomes from the woman's egg unravel and recombine together so that the two become one flesh. This unique combination of 46 chromosomes then becomes the blueprint for every subsequent cell of that new person. It can't be determined exactly how often the pill causes an embryonic abortion. However, women who take the pill report that they sometimes skip days or that they don't take it at the exact same time every day. This results in a failure rate of 3 to 5 percent. If therefore 3 to 5 percent of the women who take the pill still report a pregnancy, how many more women are having breakthrough ovulations? And of these women, how many are conceiving new life but are losing their embryos to the abortifacient effects of the synthetic progesterone? These are good questions. And if you want to read the source materials for this video or to learn more about natural family planning, the holistic alternative to contraception, visit myspace.com slash subabortifacients. Thank you.